So now we're getting back to my favorite piece of road and Beachy Head. We've got some different driving modes which we can talk about and then we can see how the handling and the performance of this car is. Has it still got that go-kart feel that Mini are so adamant and so important to the company? So we'll start off with green plus mode. So you push the switch down twice to go into that. That basically will put the car into its most efficient mode. So it will turn all of the systems off that you do not have to have in order to complete your journey safely. It doesn't turn off obviously like the head up display in your instrument binnacle. <laughs> it's things like the heated seats and air conditioning. So if you want to eke out a bit more range then you can pop it into that mode. If we flick up one more we go into mid. Now mid settings give you a bit better throttle response and actually enables you to cool the car down by having <laughs> the air conditioning on which I'm going to have to do because it's getting very very hot. That's just the weather as opposed to the car getting hot. Then when you want to have the most fun and drain your batteries quite quickly <laughs> you have sports mode so we can flick up everything goes red and it's ready to play it becomes a lot more responsive on the accelerator the steering so we should be able to have a bit more fun so now we've headed into some slightly more twisty roads that are certainly more exciting we can push on and we'll see does the additional weight mean this is going to be all wallery and horrible or will it still be a fun nimble car so at the moment we're we'll try some acceleration so we'll slow down it's all clear behind me so we're doing we'll slow down to like 20 miles an hour foot down and yeah there you go that was 60 so it's lively it's not fast but it's easily comparable to the Cooper S petrol up to around sort of 50 miles an hour after that the Cooper S petrol will disappear into the distance so have Mini made a mess of the handling in this electric car is it still as capable as the Cooper S petrol I've been driving around well, these roads here are perfect to try and answer that question. This is a ridiculously windy road. I've seen cars over a ditch down here, so we need to be careful, <laughs> but we can push on. That's lovely. That is sublime. That is really, really good. Now the car has got batteries arranged in a T-shape to down the central tunnel and across the back seats and a lighter electric motor instead of the petrol engine we've got pretty much perfect 50 50 weight distribution that's like the holy grail of driving and you can really feel that it felt so so sure-footed around that previous corner the other thing i found interesting the power delivery is a lot smoother it's easier to to regulate the amount of power you're putting through there so you could be a lot smoother this is good mini have done a blooming good job with this car it is a true hot hatch and easily capable of competing with that cooper s petrol but there's always a but in this i am slightly missing the soundtrack from that petrol engine there's no noise at all and also no no gears so it's not quite as engaging in that way but it is a lot of fun <laughs> when you put your foot down
Now these tight and twisty roads, this is where the Mini should be. They are really rather fun. So we've done the sensible town driving. We've done the mundane but essential dual carriageway, but this is where I want to be in my Mini. We've got it in automatic, so we'll push across. We're now in manual. So I've got control with the flappy paddle gearbox here. But that road stretching out, let's drop it down. Yep, <laughs> whoa, this is good. This is so fun. This isn't even the JCW model, but it puts a huge smile on your face. Making some weird animal noises there, but this is such a good car. We can throw it into the corners. It's got quite a firm suspension set up. Nice stiff chassis. So we should hopefully not get any understeers, we go round. No, it just stays planted at a reasonable speed. Oh, Mini, this is fantastic. Electric Mini, you've got some serious competition going on here. Right, here we go. The Cooper S petrol and the Cooper S electric side by side. And the first thing that is majorly different is the front grills. They're slatted on the petrol because we need lots of nice cool air in there, but there's nothing to cool under the electric one. There's, well, there's absolutely nothing. It's just blanked off pretty much. There is a slight gap under there. Both models, these, air intakes here. Well, they're not actually air intakes. They used to be in the original Mini when they were supercharged. Now they're just blanked off and it's just a styling trait. But from the front, they they look very, very similar. I've almost been uh, forgetting which one's which other than those motifs. But one thing you can do is actually have them removed. It's a, I don't know whether it's an optional extra to have less or whether it's free, but you can have it even more under the radar than than it is at the moment. So if we head round the side, we've got special wheels for the Mini E. They're designed to look like three pin plugs. I think they're cool. They are really, really funky. The Mini is funky anyway. The electric car is even better. But again, if you want to be a bit more sensible, you can fit normal 17 inch wheels. Back of the car, because it is the Cooper S spec, you have a spoiler. Best thing about this has to be these Union Jack headlights or Union flag. I can never quite get it the right way around. <laughs> Mini E badge again, and the Cooper S logo with the green S. Now, you may have noticed there's a three under here. So what's that denoting? That means the spec level. This is the level three, so that's the highest spec you can get. So you've got the base model, which comes out as 24,900 and that's basically got not a lot with it. Mid-spec is another £2,000, and with that you get heated seats and a few more driver aids. And then level three, which is £30,900, you get the panoramic double sunroof, you've got Harman Kardon stereo, head-up display, and all of the goodies thrown in there. So it's a really, really good value proposition. And surprisingly, the government actually give you money for this car they give you three thousand pounds can you believe that the government giving you money unheard of admittedly they've dropped it from three and a half thousand to three thousand but it does mean it's about 200 pounds cheaper than the equivalent cooper s model what else is different here we go this this is a big difference exhaust pipes we don't have any on the electric car None at all. So this looks all angry and aggressive. I personally prefer the back of the list one, but they redesigned the back because they needed to do something with it because obviously you have two exhaust pipes here. But very, very similar, quite a usable 
size boot. I think it's 211 litres. They're the same. This has got a comfort pack, so you've got a false floor where all your charging cables and whatnot go on. But that is the outside of the Cooper S petrol and the Cooper S electric. Nearly the same. Choosing between them is getting so difficult. I love both, to be honest. What do you guys think? Do you prefer the look of the Cooper S petrol or the electric? Well, let's hop back in and we will continue our journey in this glorious East Sussex countryside. So let's talk about what is running this car. We know in the petrol version we had a two litre turbocharged engine with 192 brake horsepower, 270 newton meters of torque. This has got 136 kilowatts with a 32.6 kilowatt battery straight out of the BMW i3. It's around 182 brake horsepower, 260 newton meters of torque. So that is why the performance figures are very, very similar. It's just the way it delivers it. So you may be wondering, why did BMW make a car that would only do 144 miles? Why not put a load of batteries in here and make it class leading and do three or maybe even 400 miles? There is a very good reason. In fact, there's two reasons for that. More batteries means more cost. Batteries are incredibly expensive. So you go from having a car that was um, £24,000, you'll probably buy another five or £6,000. So all of a sudden the proposition of cheap electrical motoring disappears out the window. Also, it becomes a very, very heavy car. Batteries are incredibly heavy. So you put more weight in and then it becomes slow and sluggish and that mini go-kart handling that you wanted that probably goes as well this is the fastest car in its class as we've said before it is a quick car it's nearly as quick as the petrol so they're the two reasons why you need to make some sort of compromise but does that compromise matter I would be more than happy with having a car that does 100, 120 miles. Hear me out on this one, because I don't think it matters. BMW did some testing, and they think the average person does 30 miles a day. Well, if your car's going to do 110, 120, let's say it does 80 miles because you're in sports mode, that is still plenty of range, and you just come home and charge it up so 12 hours in a normal three pin plug if you've got a wall charger you can do it in three hours 12 and if you've got a fast charger somewhere around 38 minutes so no it doesn't matter I mean even if you said you did double that you did 60 miles well 60 120 and still double the range so to me it does not matter in the slightest that it hasn't got class leading range I'd rather have a car that was fun and had good handling, good performance, than ridiculously long range. So having driven around for the past couple of days, would I choose the electric or would I choose the petrol? In summary, the electric car has the same sort of performance, although it does feel quicker due to that instant torque. Handling wise, I actually would say it feels better than the Cooper S. That 50-50 weight distribution has really, really helped. It's a little bit cheaper to buy thanks to the government grant. It's got no road tax. If you're a company car owner, benefit in kind is zero. You'd have no costs in London with the uh, congestion charge. It's cheaper to run. The servicing costs are a lot lower. So the sensible choice has to be 
getting the electric car. It's got to be, no other choice. But I wouldn't get the best car. I would actually still buy the petrol. And there's only one reason for that. I have nowhere to actually charge the car. I don't have a driveway. I park off road and there's no charges and I'd have to run a cable across the road. So unfortunately for me, the car I want and the car that is the best car, I wouldn't get. I want to say a massive thank you to Steve at Chandler's Mini in Houghton for allowing me to take both the electric and petrol cars out for a couple of days. Remember guys, they are open for business, so if you do watch this video and think, oh, I really want to test drive that electric car, in fact, any car they've got, just give them a ring, speak to Steve and say, Steve, I'd like to test drive one of your cars, and he'll book you in for an appointment. There are a few changes made there, social distancing, so there's things marked out on the floor, you've got hand sanitizers, the cars are wiped down after each test drive, um, if you're talking to someone at their desk, there's these Perspex screens. So it's all very safe, um, which is really important. Anyway, on that note, guys, I'm going to call this video to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Comments are always welcome. And remember to click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.